Hello, welcome back to another video. Um, I've been asked a lot lately how I installed the stealth burner on my Elegoo Neptune. Um, my printer's a 3 plus um, running clipper, of course, um, and I thought I'd make a video to help out. Um, these are just some spare parts that I've had lying around um, that I can use for the purpose of this video. Um, so this part right here is the original backing plate uh, excuse the cut off it was used for prototyping um this is what you'll have on your neptune uh, at least the neptune threes i'm pretty sure the neptune fours are the same possibly even the neptune twos um and you'll notice there's a, a few offset um extrusions here um so i designed this mount um obviously the voron mounting on the front and on the back it has the holes for those extrusions um You'll need to print this part. Um, this one was printed in PLA and it lasted ages on the printer, uh, but I can see some warp into it now. Um, so you probably want to do this in ABS if you can. Um, you'll need seven heat set inserts. Um, obviously the mountings on the front here, one in the side for the uh, inductive probe. So this is very simple. That fits in there. And then you'll need some M3 screws, uh, excuse the length of that one, it's the first one I grabbed, um, and then some screws, on, uh, nuts on the back of there. Um, I recommend uh, using something like a nylock nut or spring washers to stop that vibrating loose. Um, however, that's the the main part. Um, this bracket was designed to be non-destructive, so you can reverse this, go back to your Elegoo hot end if you wish. Um, so yeah, let's build it. Um, I don't know why I've got this, but this is a, a V6 um, nozzle, um, and, and this is a spare extruder setup, um, the Clockwork 2, uh, that comes with the stealth burner, is standard, um, there's some parts missing from it, but we're not here to show how to build one of those, we're here to show how to put it on the printer. Um, so you'll want some small-ish M3 screws. Um, some M3 by 8s here, um, and this is incredibly simple. Um, let's get my screwdriver. Uh, these little screws go in here, in here when they want to fit. And so the extruder setup goes at the top um, in the, the little setback part. Um, very simple. Simply screw that in there. And I don't have a long enough bit for this. Always prepared. Um, so there's two screws in there. Uh, one on this side and the one that you've just seen me put in there. Um, now the actual extruder section of it um this is already assembled you've got the wires and whatnot in there on the inside um you'll want to pre-fit these two screws which i can't do um they simply screw here and here Now the reason for this is that the the lower half um, has cutouts for those screws, um, so that nice and simply pushes up into those. Oop, make sure you don't pinch your wires. And there is the lower half. And I bet my screwdriver oop, it does fit. So you have all of the the fundamentally required parts for your stealth burner fitted. No. Let's tighten that one up a bit. There we go. Um, obviously your um, inductive probe will screw on the side here. Um, on my printables page for this bracket, I've already got the X and Y offsets for the probe um, to the nozzle. Uh, that was based on using a Bamboo Lab 
nozzle, um, not, a, not a V6. Um, but I think they're generally all the same. Uh, this nozzle generally winds up exact centre to the extruder. So those uh, measurements should be the same. Um, your wiring now. Uh, so on mine, I run canvas. So I've got a EBB from Big Tree Tech uh, tool head that sits in the side here. And then it has a front board that controls the fans and the fancy LEDs and whatnot. Um, but when I first built this, I didn't. What I did was mounted my original tool head board from the Neptune on the back here. Um, or rather than behind the, the stepper motor. Um, now that worked, but it wasn't the cleanest looking setup. And you obviously can't get the cable door to fit and whatnot. So it looks a mess. Um, going CAN bus. Probably the best choice I've made on my printer so far. Um, it means there's only four wires going to your tool head, which all come bundled in one if you go with the Big Tree Tech. And that's basically it. Um, so what you would you would have a, a board here, um, which I might have a spare one. I do. Here's one that I blew up earlier. Um, so this is one of those boards, and this is the only wires you need coming up here. Um, so it's pretty brilliant. Um, that fits in here. You have a nice, neat cable door that covers everything up. It looks beautiful. Um, and there's another board that goes in the front of this that I can't find at the moment because I always also blew that one up. And now the uh, the piece de resistance is the uh, the how awesome the stuff burner looks in general. Um, just move some wires. Obviously, you wouldn't have this mess of wires in here. And this simply pushes onto the front of the extruder and clips onto the lower lower half. What's going on here? Uh, like so. This is all uh, out of shape. So excuse that. Uh, yours will not look like this. Um, one thing you will need is some long M3 screws. Um, I don't know why I didn't have these for so long, so I just had the two at the top here, and it caused all this, this to separate. Um, so with the longer screws, they're, I think, 50mm. Um, yeah, 50mm M3 screws are ideal for this. And they pin all of the bottom together. It's oh, a tight fit. Um, and there's two of those. Once those are tightened, you have your tool head. Um, I'll move over to some photographs and maybe video of the stealth burner fitted to my Neptune. Um, it's obviously a bit different to this one as I've got a filament cutter um, and it's all set up for multi-material, um, which I'll be doing more videos on very soon. Um, so I'm moving by hand over here, so uh, I apologise if it's a little wobbly. Um, this is my setup. Um, as you can see, the uh, full stealth burner here. Open the door. You can see here we have the canvas and everything runs through this one cable right here. Um, I do have an extra two cables uh, because I have a servo that chops filament. Um, but as you can see, everything's on here. It has uh, NeoPixel LEDs. Just let me close out under there. Um, but this is just so much easier. Um, yes, it's a little heavier than the original, uh, but I, I see absolutely no side effects to that. Um, works exactly as you should. Um, now the reason I went stealth burner uh, was mainly because I wanted a filament cutter. Uh, originally I went with this Spellometrics one um, and had a little probe on the side here that would poke into it. Um, but that relies on essentially taking this at speed and crashing it um, and obviously then you lose steps. So every single time I cut the filament I'd have to go and home the x-axis. Um, otherwise obviously skip steps. Um, so, yeah, that's why I went with the servo. It's in absolutely no detrimental effects. Um, as you can see here, I um, managed to uh, crash a few times whilst testing. Um, anyway, this is my canvas wire. It goes straight up to my controller. Uh, obviously, I'm running Clipper. Uh, everything runs on a Raspberry Pi back there. Um, and a canvas controller. Uh, now, originally, I had a Big Tree Tech Pad 7. Um, it's over here. Uh, remove that. Uh, I needed more ports and a little more power, um, and it just took a few things out of the equation. Um, and if you're wondering why we're running a Bowden on this uh, tool head with an extruder, if we follow the tube up, 
and then we go through the letterbox. Uh, the Enraged Rabbit Carrot Feeder, uh, version 2, and the uh, Sternwheeler Buffers, um, there's two of those uh, with four lanes each. Um, there's only this one loaded at the moment, but you can see uh, this just stops any filament getting tangled when it unloads from the carrot feeder. Um, works very well, um, and I tried without a buffer, it's not worth it. Um, and finally, everything runs on a tablet. Um, this old Kindle Fire thing, um, running clipper screen. Obviously, we've got the arranged rabbit happy hair screen there. Um, and yeah, everything's working flawlessly. Um, there will be a video coming up very soon, um, now that everything's started working again, uh, showcasing the multi material setup. Um, but I will give a quick shout out Filamentive. Um, these guys. Uh, just want to say thanks to them really they've uh, shown some confidence in the channel um, and given me one massive haul of filament um, which you can now see lives off there um, the filaments seem brilliant so far from the testing I've done although most of it is still sealed up ready for a nice video showcasing the eight lanes of colour change um, and that's it for this video um, I hope you're enjoying the content and consider subscribing and there will be lots more printing content coming very soon.